it's always it's always a good time when we have no idea what we're going to talk about. So I know it's like what's on today's menu of suggestions. The menu of suggestions. We want to talk about bridges, bridges and rainbows. How about that? Then that's a fun subject. Yes. And so, what would we talk about with bridges? But bridges. There are so many bridges going on right now with this collective, with this beautiful group of people, these beings that are here, following, sharing, and um, what is the thing you need them to do? Clicking like, yes. And so as we, we want to talk about these bridges, we want to talk about how the souls here right now, the ones who are in their awakening states, all the different versions of them, all the different levels of awakening, are creating bridges to the other realms, creating bridges to the other frequencies, the other dimensions, and and helping to bring in those energies, not just bring the energy into the earth, but also bringing earth energy to these other spaces, these other collectives, these galaxies, and, and so forth, because everyone needs to um, collaborate, is a good word. There's a lot of collaboration going on where these energies of earth are working with the energies of the galactic councils and and the other um planetary systems and everything is just doing this beautiful dance and so as these bridges are being built there is more understanding of the earth there's more ways to help the earth and the people of the earth and so lots of a lot of things going on with these bridges um again we have told you guys in the past to watch for the colors of the rainbow to show up. A lot of rainbow colors happening all around you, lots of very bright and vibrant colors. And now what we want to do is not so much talk about the rainbow, but start talking about how many of you are now opening up to the new spectrums of colors. Colors that you do not have descriptions for or ways to describe because they do not fit into your uh, spectrum of colors of the rainbow or you can't say it's a shade of red because it's not a shade of red. And then how do you describe this color? How do you describe the feeling that comes with this color? And so we know a lot of you are stepping into this frequency, this raised vibration where you are now having access to not just different levels of energy, but also different frequencies of color and of sound. And we want to know, and, and this is where Jason will point down to the little description box below or the place to comment below. We want to know how many of you are hearing music when there's no music playing. How many of you are hearing sounds when there's, there shouldn't be any sounds around you? And so there's a lot of things going on with the um, octaves of the eardrum, with the uh, sensories of the third eye, with the sensories of the physical body. We have talked before about the mantis beings coming in and working with many of you to heighten these sensories. And now you should be at a point where you are starting to notice that you have been heightened in these areas. You invite them in to come and work with you and now you find you are more sensitive or that you have more control over the sensories or the impasse that would carry everybody's burdens and pretty soon you're weighed down and, and you don't know what feeling is yours and what is someone else's. Well now, with the mantis being's help, you are able to have that high sensory of other people's feelings, but you are also able to differentiate between your own and theirs and not carry theirs, not own theirs, but address it, see it, uh, be helpful where you can be, give advice, but you don't carry it and you, you no longer see it as your problem to fix. And you let them move forward and fix their own problem, which is helping them to graduate to the next level for themselves. And so some of you will be noticing that as well. And, and there's another bridge. And so lots of fun things going on in your planet right now. There's a lot of, uh, lot of things that look like upheaval happening, a lot of things that look like uh, turmoil, tumultuous things to work through, family, friends, work, home, finances, whatever is in an uproar, just trust that it is all being worked out divinely. When you can step out of that box of fear around it, when, when you are really surrounded by things coming at you and it feels overwhelming, that is when we want you to pause. We want you to step out. We want you to take count of yourself because you are in more control than you think you are. 
when you can step out and you can set your intentions for how you would like to respond to this. And here's, here's going to be a little clue. Respond in love. Respond with a very loving way to respond. And find it in your heart energetically to let go of the anger, the hurt, the pain, the sadness, whatever feels like an attack, whatever feels like a burden, whatever feels like a lack. Send love to it. And when you can send the love to it, you can surround it, you can cocoon it in that energy, then you will start to find yourself being uh, wrapped up in and taken care of. You'll start to find the thing that was tumultuous for you to get through is now smoothing out and becoming much easier, much more um, palatable. And then soon you'll, you'll be able to look back and, and see, well, that happened and then this happened and that got me here. And so you'll start to be able to see the pattern of why that was happening or what direction it was guiding you to go. And so nothing is for nothing, right? You, you are going through something because it is taking you somewhere. It is guiding you, it is pushing you, it is your accelerator to get you there to that thing that you desire, to the thing that you came here to do, whatever it might be, it is pushing you in that direction. Hmm. We want to see if there's any questions that you have at this time, Jason. Yes, in a way. So you mentioned bridges and rainbows. For the rainbow part, you mentioned that we're going to be seeing certain colors in the rainbow is this going to happen in the future or is this happening right this now? is happening right now okay and some of the people watching uh and you and some of you did this on the last video you did comment and you did confirm that there was there were um things happening for you it was the hybrid children i believe we talked about and and there were people that did um send in messages that they are part of that collective and they were watching the video and how exciting is that to get the confirmation and we share that with you keeping their identities private but that is happening and there are many people that are that are having these experiences and and the colors and the sounds the frequencies the way it comes in for you may be different than it comes in for another person but seeing colors Rather you see them in your mind's eye or you see them with your physical eye, it does not matter. You are seeing them and they are spectrums, they are frequencies of light that you have never seen before. And that carry with it a feeling, an emotion possibly that goes with it. And so we want you not to just be so focused on what you are seeing with the third eye or the physical eye, but also what is it that you are feeling. There is a lot of thinning veils going on around right now as well. You're going to be experiencing, um, seeing things from other dimensions, seeing things from other realities that are coexisting on your planet at this time. Uh, it, we may have talked about this already. It does feel familiar. So we want to just recap on that, that as you are uh, experiencing these shifts within the planet, you are, uh, there are a lot of you that will notice that you are catching things out of the corner of the eye, that you are moving through these dimensions. The veils are getting thinner. Things are happening around you that are showing you that shift is happening. Things are taking place. Something is moving. Something is changing on your planet. And these are exciting changes, even if they catch you off guard. They, they are still a very exciting changes that are moving you in the direction that you are all hoping for, which is that new earth or the fifth dimension. And if there isn't any questions, we would like to go into a little new earth segment with you as well. Um, last question would be about the bridges. Can you give us more details about when you mentioned bridges? Like, what is that exactly? Maybe a better way to identify that is there are cords. There are cords that create knowledge exchange between the human experience and a galactic experience. So let's say the Octorians, for example, are here to help the Earth. There's a collective of Octorians, much like Daniel and the Imperial group that speak through Tracy that want to be here to help, but they need to understand the human experience. Why do you make the choices you make? Why are you doing the things you're doing? Why, what are the changes and adaptability that, are, that a human body is capable of doing? What, and, and so like a vehicle like Tracy would be gathering this information that you know, this, having the human experience is 
is giving and then giving authorization to the Arcturian Council to collect that data from her physical being, from her mental being, she creates an exchange. And so then they can collect the information through her experiences, through her physical body, her mental body, her emotional body, and, and through her experiences, her memories, and so forth to um, collaborate with with the humankind, figure out what is it that we could do to help them move to that next level? How do we help the bodies physically uh, generate the right DNA, the right cellular structure to support the new frequencies that are coming in? And so those are what the bridges are that we are talking about for some of that. And some of it is the bridges uh, for somebody that is unawake to find their awakening. There's those bridges as well. There are many different kinds of bridges for as many scenarios as you could come up with, there is a bridge that fills in that gap between the human experience and where that needs to go. Rather, it is to an awakening state to uh, help a galactic council, to the galactic council helping the humankind, all types of different things going on through food, through um, climate changes, through all kinds of different things. So like we said, Jason, anything you could come up with, there is probably some form of of courting or bridge to a group of beings that is working on helping with that situation. Does that make sense now? Yes. Yes. Thank you very much for that information. Perfect. And so we, we do want to go into that fifth dimensional reality. Perfect. And this was, this was a discussion that was had uh, during one of the sessions this week that Tracy had, and we had come in and we had talked about the fifth dimensional reality. And one of the things that uh, came to light was how so many people say 5D or New Earth. 5D, New Earth, 5D, New Earth. Well, one of the ways to create 5D and New Earth is through the collective thought of what is fifth dimension or what is your 5D. Mm. And so we realized that through this session that we had that maybe not everybody has a clear picture of what that looks like for them. And without that clear picture of what is new earth or what is 5D, then it is just a word. We are just creating 5D. We are just creating, there, there is not, when the universe reads the mind and the vibration and the thoughts of your manifestation, having those more detailed version of it, it kind of goes back to the story we told before. If, if Tracy were to say, I want a new car, Jason, will you go get me a new car? Jason does not know what kind of new car to get Tracy. So he is just going to go to a car lot and say, well, there's a car and bring that back for her. Minivans look good. <laughs> she just she just banged her head against the cement wall when you said that minivan. Yeah. <laughs> but what, what we want to say, if, if Tracy said, Jason, I think it would be really super fun to get a four-door Jeep Cherokee with all the bells and whistles. I like the color dark blue. And I like to have the roof rack on it with the tire in the back, with the big knobby uh, off-road tires, with the winch on the front, with the, uh, uh, all the little big extended fenders. And I want it jacked up three feet so that I'm way up off the ground. And she wouldn't drive that, by the way, but we're just having some fun with her. She doesn't like the four-door Jeep. She just doesn't like that version of it. But... <laughs> Jason now has a very clear picture of what Tracy wants and he could go to a car lot and say, oh, that station wagon isn't going to work. She wants this, this Jeep over here. And he's more clear about what she wants. Everybody listening, what is your version of the fifth dimensional reality? What is your experience with fifth dimensional reality? What does it mean to you? Paint that picture in your mind. The universe right now is a blank slate waiting for that picture of what is new earth what is new earth what does the economics look like what does the um, interaction of the communities look like what does the city look like what does the country look like what does nature look like what does the animal kingdom look like what does that look like to you and your experience is there even some of this stuff in your new earth what is it that is is calling out to you with this idea of the new earth is it that fear-based energies drop away? Is it that there's going to be a collective consciousness? And what does that look like when there's a collective consciousness? How does that expand your mind? How does that expand your experience? Start thinking about it. 
start putting energy there. What does the new earth look like? Because the universe is just waiting um, to build and create this energy with you. And they're going to energetically match it for you and help you to, to get there even quicker. Mm. And so that was one of the things that Tracy thought we should bring that into the message today. And apparently she forgot about that when she talked to you, Jason, but we remembered and we remember that this fifth dimensional reality, it, it is very clear in some people's minds what that looks like and other people are still struggling to form that, that energy around it. What does it look like? What is it that 5D looks like to me? New earth looks like to me. I am a creator in this, so let me participate. So we want everybody to start thinking about that. And remember that you are fully creating your dream life here. What does your dream life look like? And we hate to be the nag, but we want you to stay out of the negative. I don't want there to be mean people anymore. That's a negative. Everyone there is alive and vibrant and helpful and kind and compassionate and loving and trustworthy. That is a positive. And so there's no room for that other person that you mentioned that we don't want you to mention when, if they don't fit into the mold of all this beautiful kindness and compassion and love and, and helpfulness and trustworthiness, there's no room for anything below that, right? So you don't need to state it. Anyways, that is what we want to say about 5D. Be part of the creation of it. Be in your mind creating. What is that version of it for you? What does it look like? What's the weather like? What does the sky look like? What does everything look like? When the birds are flying through the air, can you hear them? Is, is there a stillness? Is there a busyness? Is there, um, is there a frequency or a vibration you think it might feel like? All of that. We want all of the details. Mm. Mm. Any questions around that? Yes. So with that being said, with the 5D reality, it kind of goes along the, the lines of when they say you create your reality. So with the 5D is w what you create in your mind is what you're creating for 5D. Yes. Okay. Yes, you are part of the, you are a co-creation of it and you will get the experience that you desire from it. So we really want you to focus on that. What is your desire? Maybe you want love. Maybe you want family. Maybe you want uh, success. Maybe you want fame. It, it, whatever it is, what is your desire? And Interesting. Mm -hmm. I do have a side question I, that I was thinking about. What if someone creates a negative reality in 5D? Is that possible? Like a hard that that, situation. Yeah. Give us an example of what you mean. Like, what if someone doesn't create this perfect utopia 5D? What if someone creates a negative reality? Like, you know, it's, it's always hard for them. They can never get ahead. You know, nothing's ever working out for them. They're struggling. But and they, they are still, still in fear when they go to that place. And so they would not be in the fifth dimension. Um, the fear frequency does not uh, will not resonate. So they keep rise up out of the fear, knowing that everything is possible. Anything is possible. You can have whatever you want, whatever you desire. You become an energetic match to it much quicker, much faster when you're out of fear, and you know that you deserve it. You um, you are lovable. You are worthy, and you deserve to have that manifestation and that desire. We have a very panty dog over here. So if you can hear that, we apologize. He's very, very loud to us and very distracting as he keeps pulling our energy. But when you, get into, when you get into the desire of, of the manifestation, that is what we are saying. If you find yourself going into that negative place, like you were saying, Jason, um, I don't want this or this sucks and I don't want this anymore. I'm tired of my empty bank account. I'm tired of fighting with my spouse. I'm tired of the kids. Um, always doing X, Y, Z, then you're still in the third dimension. When you see everybody successful, everybody's thriving, there is no more jealousy, there is no more competition. You're thriving and everyone around you is thriving and you are excited for them and they're excited for you. And there is no more competition with that. And it doesn't mean it takes away from any of the fun of having it. it it's just that there's... Mm, there's not that 
animosity. There's not that um, that angst around it anymore. And creating in that beautiful energy of of being positive. So let's say you're playing a game of baseball with a bunch of little kids, and the one the team that loses can be disappointed and walk away and hang their heads and kick the dirt and throw the ball and be angry and upset. Well, that is not a fifth dimensional reality, but you can still have baseball in the fifth dimension and the team that loses wishes the other team good game, good game. And truly they mean it. It was a good game. Everybody played their hardest. Great job. We'll see you next time. And who knows who will win that one. And it is lighthearted. It is goodwilled. It is a high vibrational fun game to watch and nobody has to be mad or angry or judge themselves for how they played or whatever that does that help to put it in a scenario like that i think so so if you go into this baseball game with negative intentions then you probably have a bad outcome or not too good of an You're outcome not going to have the outcome you desire You're right but if you go in like, hey, let's all just have fun, have a good time, let's do our best, let's ex expect a great time, then you're going to have a great time and have fun. Mm -hmm. Yes, and be encouraging of each other and, and see the other person thriving and you're thriving. There's room for everybody to do well and room for everybody to be excellent at what they're doing and to be awake and alive and full of life. And so why not have it for everyone? Any other questions that you might have? Do you have anything else you would like to add to the 5D experience mm -hmm. that you think that uh, mankind or humankind should know about? <laughs> well, you know, there's a lot of changes already happening on the earth. You see it, you experience it. A um, lot of... Uh, <laughs> Tracy laughs a little bit. One of her siblings sent a, a photo of her wearing shorts in October in Oregon. She says, I still can't get used to the idea that I'm wearing shorts in October. That used to not be a thing. It was it, The weather would cool down and it would be uh, much cooler in Oregon at this time. And so with the global shifting, with the polar shifts and, and the things that are going on with, with nature, we're finding a lot of things changing. A lot of fires happened again this year, a lot of um, storms that are taking place. There's going to be more of that. The world is shifting, the planet is shifting, um, the energy is shifting. And you spoke of the, of the flash, the flash, uh, what did you call it? Because we'll call it a solar flash because that's what Tracy calls it. So This was more like a, didn't seem like a solar flash. This was more of a flash of like, Maybe a flash in knowledge, a flash in awakening. Is there anything that you would like to share about that? This deals with another session that someone we, else had. Yes, and we, we know the conversation that you had around that. And we, we want to say that the way that we are seeing that, because that information did come through a different source, we are trying to tap into that. We, what we are seeing is not, not everybody will experience that. Um, it is that is true <laughs> this is designed for people that are resonating at a certain frequency mm -hmm. people that are carrying a certain dna within their genetic codes will experience this uh, download of information and uh, this uh, almost dumping of new codes new new programming new information um, frequencies, whatever you identify with most. Uh, those who are downloaded with this program will then spread out into the world and start to find their way in how they were supposed to share that uh, along the globe to bring that information to those who did not receive it. So that is, and, and we don't know if we're talking about the same flash that you were speaking of, but this is the one that's being shown to us as we ask the question. To yeah, the the best, yeah, the best way to explain it that I could think of it is that a flash of awakening. Mm -hmm. So maybe that deals with, and it's true that in this other session that some people will experience it and some people will not experience it. Mm hmm so um some people yes we that is how we're seeing it is that 
the ones that have the right genetic coding for this flash will receive the information. And there are a lot of people that are ready for that, that are lining up for that. Mm. Um, we would say probably the majority of the listeners are ready for this, and that is why it's coming into the show. And so that is something to be prepared for. And if you aren't sure if you are one of them, ask your councils to line you up with that if that is of desire to help you to be prepared energetically to have the right coding within your energy so that you may receive this download of information. Perfect. Uh, we, we want to say that, mm, how do we want to say that? When you, when you are downloaded with this information, you will be getting, and, and forgive us if this strays from what you have heard before, but it feels to us like you will be getting assignments with that, that you will be getting uh, this feeling or this urge or this desire to share it in a certain way, These, this new information that comes in or a new ability that starts to surface for you through this download of, of codes, but that you're going to have also an assignment that comes with that. So you will, some will, some will want to share it through verbally talking about it. Some will want to share it through their energy services. Some will want to share it through the way they write or paint or do their art. And so it's going to come through many different facets of energy through the ones that are downloaded with the code. So. Interesting. Yeah, it, it, that also was part of it where people would have a better knowing afterwards of what to do and what to share. Well, what we want to look at now, if the, did you have other questions with the fifth dimensional? No, unless there's something else you would like to share. I can always circle back to it. Mm -hmm. um, we just kind of want to get into the energy of the audience, of those who are listening, and, and be present with them, see if there's anything that they need, any, any information that we can provide that would bring in clarity for anyone listening. So that is the... The name Sam or Samuel is coming in. We're hearing it repeated in, in our head. Sam, Samuel, Samuel, Samuel. Uh, what is it that is the message? So either Samuel is listening, Sam or Samuel, um, or somebody knows somebody by this name. There is some guidance or a change, something. <laughs> We don't know if you'll understand this. We see a path in front of you and you can go to the left or you can go to the right. So right now in your mind, if you are listening to the Samuel, pick which side is the left, which is the right, which, which choice that you're making. And so whatever it is in your mind, you've already decided what, what choice is on the left and what choice is on the right. Now what we wanna tell you is go to the right. So I hope that helped. There is a choice that's being made. They want you to go to the right. They want you to go to the one that you feel or sense off to the right. And so we hope that helped. And if somebody else is listening to this and that resonated for them as well, please follow that feeling or that instruction for yourself if it resonates. We are looking at the energy of uh, people who have been taking in the sun, taking in the energy of the sun, getting their time out in the sun. Uh, that is, we've talked about that before, where we get a lot of downloads, a lot of codes that come in through the frequencies of the sun. Um, there are some of you that, that might even do that thing where you gaze into the sun and you can see that. Um, and please, if that is something that you are hearing for the first time and you go, I want to be a sun gazer. Please look into how to do that the right way so that you do not damage your eyes. But there is a way to do that that um, should be followed. And so we, we are not very clear on what that process is, but please follow it if you feel that just called to you. But there is energy that is coming in from the sun that is here there is something that is coming in. It's almost like shards, like little red rays or shards or, but take pictures if you can, where you get the uh, spectrums of light coming in 
what what do they call that, Jason? When someone takes a picture and it gives them a rainbow effect when they have the sunlight in their camera. Mm, is it a sunburst or an aura? Yes, a sunburst. Maybe that is it. And we want people to start getting very creative about that because we are asking your councils to show themselves through the sunburst, through the pictures, through um, bringing through that frequency when you can capture it on your phone or on your camera. Um, you'll start to see images within those those distortions of the picture that bring in those rainbow colors or the light, um, the light beams that come in. You'll start to see other shapes, sizes, symbols, things that are activators for you, your council members coming through and showing themselves to you. Uh, go out and play with that a little bit. Why there's still sun, they say. Why there's still sun and not getting into the winter months. Not that the sun is going away, but we're just talking about the change of seasons. And if you are somewhere where that happens, take advantage of playing in the sun way you have the sun out and take some of those pictures to see what develops for you. Uh, we think uh, you and Tracy's friend Dean, he speaks of this often as well. And um, sure does. <laughs> these, these pictures where, where the digital picture can take different shapes and forms and you can look at it one day and then the next day you'll look and you see something in it that you didn't see the day before. And so it is definitely something that we are getting uh, would benefit some of you to play with that and bring that in for yourselves to one for evidence to to just give yourself confirmation that you're not crazy right it's right there it's right there in the picture and you can see it uh, but it's also an activating thing when you capture that it's evidence for you that you are activating yourself to that next level that you are seeing through the dimensions even when you take the photo you are able to see through the dimensions into this other realm where this this image can come forward for you. So that is something to play with. And um, grounding, make sure you're grounding your energy into the earth at this time and um, allow for Mother Earth to work through you, to bring her energy up through you, to bring her essence up through you and the kindness just move that energy of feeling grounded in that peace and, and know that you can take all of your troubles and worries and woes of the day and just um, bring them down into the earth to be transmuted. So do an exercise of that daily if you can and get yourself into a nice habit of connecting with the earth, sending that love energy and always responding in love as well. Just respond in love with everything that's going on around you. There is a lot of people going through really hard times. Um, there's a lot of people that are in chaos and whether you are the one that's in chaos or you are the one witnessing the one in chaos. They need your love. It doesn't mean you go up and hug them, they're in chaos, that might not be safe, but move yourself out of that, that energy and then sit with that and just invite love to be surrounding them, call in their angels and guides to help guide them because they're feeling scattered, they're feeling disconnected, and that's not going to be the thing that's on their radar to do. So it is very nice to call in the calm, the clarity, the help that is needed for people that are in crisis right now. And that would be a wonderful thing as a collective that we could do for the people that are moving through some really difficult times. Do you have any more questions? No, not at this time. Wonderful. Well, we think we are also done. Uh, there are many distractions in this in this home today. <laughs> and uh, Jason knows some of them before we even got started with, with what was going on. But it seems now that the dog is scratching at the door and it, it just keeps kind of pulling Tracy back into her body. So this might be one of those that we just say, that is our message for today and let you guys have that as we bring her back in. And if there's no more questions, Jason, we'll go ahead and do that and let you talk to Tracy. Uh, well, thank you very much for bringing in that information about the bridges, the rainbows and the 5D. Yes, and um, we were grateful for questions. the opportunity as we know it. You, you both had to orchestrate your lives a little bit today to make that happen. So we thank you for 
setting aside the time and letting us come in with the messages today. And thank you very much. And she says, don't forget to announce the live show again. So huh, not a problem. For that. Mm -hmm. Don't forget, Daniel, October 20th. We're putting it on our calendar right now. <laughs> <laughs> because for us, it is always right now. So we'll be there. <laughs> Perfect. Thank you so much, Jason. And we'll bring back Tracy. Okay. So yeah, that's that was a lot of crazy going on for <laughs> <laughs> this room was lit up with energy and not not the kind that we're calling the spirits, but whatever was going on, the animals were stir crazy. Mm. It was <laughs> lots of energy in the house. So maybe the reality over there was changing. The reality is changing. <laughs> Timeline shift. <laughs> So. Interest. Well, the bridges was interesting. So, what were you saying? Yeah. It was more like chords. They were like um, lines. Well, first they were showing them like bridges and rainbows in my head, and then um, as you were asking about the bridges, they were really showing them like these little gold cords. Well, kind of like you know your electrical cords. Um, you know, it's like we're plugged in, and you know, get that information from me, and. Um, it was it was an exchange of information so it goes two ways it's it is balanced you know they're they're getting what information they can from us to create uh or to know how to help us so you know when we've got the octarians the palladians the all these other beings are coming in and channeling and trying to find ways to energetically send us waves of energy or whatever whatever frequencies they're programming into those waves it's from the data that they're collecting from the volunteers. So, you know, whatever, whatever their ships are sending to us, they programmed them with what they think will help us shift mm. in the right direction. That's my understanding. Somebody else might be watching it and going, that doesn't work like that. That's how I'm seeing it in my head. So. Perfect. So the rainbows and the bridges is kind of like the same thing. Well, the rainbows are frequencies. That's yeah, yeah, that was the one with the colors. I'm sorry. Yeah, that's the colors. Um, the, and we can marry those together because, you know, if they're getting information from us and sending us frequencies, if we have gotten to a place now where they're sending us frequencies of color that, are no, that go beyond our spectrum or we're actually able to see those colors now, then that's showing our evolution, which shows the bridges are working because they're able to raise us up into that other um, color that we don't know how to describe. And mm. so. Interesting. Ask to see the colors. Say, I want to see the colors that I can't describe. <laughs> <laughs> so. If yeah. you can't describe that color, how can you talk about it? I don't know. <laughs> But I've had people do that in the past in their sessions, you know, they go to like, uh, let's say Crystal Cave. And right. It's like, okay, what are you experiencing? I don't even know how to describe it. I, it's an energy, it's a color, it's a thing. I just don't even know how to describe it. And that's, that right. is their description. It's undescribable. So they've never hmm. had an experience like that before. How do you put words to that? So, so that's pretty cool. To know that you know more people are going to start seeing colors that are indescribable. Hmm. Interesting. Okay. Um, when I ask that question, what if someone creates a negative reality? As in, like they're living a harder life. What were you seeing on that? Yeah. yeah. So um, yeah, well, they were showing that, you know, if they're in, if it's a fear-based thing, if they're creating something um, out of fear, they're not going to be in the fifth dimension. But makes sense. There could be people in the fifth dimension that don't realize how much more they could be creating oh. or experiencing. So that could be a way to take that question and expand it, because they could be like, oh, I deserve a good life, and and maybe they put the cap at midlife here when they could be having an infinite, you know, it, there right. is no limit to it, but yet they think a good life in, you know, it's like, okay, I have all of this stuff. That's a good life. So 
they stop manifesting and creating, but yet not that they would stop, but they, they could know that there's so much more and it's so much more expansive and it's okay. It's okay to have it. You know, we've been taught learn behaviors that having material possessions might make us greedy or, or bad people or a lot of money. People with a lot of money do bad things. You know, there's all these different stories that people have in their mind over money, possessions, and whatever, but really we're the only ones demonizing the money and the possessions. You know, they're just things. So, you know, do you go get the, what did you say, a minivan? <laughs> you go get the minivan. Yeah, you go get the suit. Like, like Jeep, you know? Tracy looks so, like a minivan type of person. <laughs> I've had them. I've had them, <laughs> and I was quick to trade them off as well. So, <laughs> yeah, I did have one though. It was a I know. caravan that was. Uh, mm -hmm. had a I remember motor in it. It was nice. It was good. I remember. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so. Yep. Interesting. Anyway. Interesting. And then uh, we talked a little bit about the flash that we were talking about. So were you seeing yeah. it on your side? They weren't sure if they were getting the same flash that you were talking about, but um, it was interesting because... What were they showing you? Well, the way I was seeing it is like if you had a room full of people, uh, probably... Well, if you had a room full of light workers, the whole room would be lit up. But if you had a room full of mix, you know, the ones that were ready for the codes were like lit up mm -hmm. and this light would come in and like come into the crown chakra. But the ones that weren't ready for it were still kind of shadowy. Um, so they were so basically it was not everybody's ready for this information. But the ones that are are then going to be expanded into the next level of how they come into the world, you know, what are they teaching? And, you know, that came through the other day that the, there is, we've, and I think that was, was that in our session where we've reached the cap or a lot of people are, have hit that ceiling and now it's time to open that and the next level will come in. It's kind of. Yeah. You did mention something like that. Like, like, okay, you hear, you always want to expand. Like you always want to yeah, go keep up. going up. And it's like people have reached the cap of where, what we've been working at now. And so this flash is like opening that next can of worms. And so, um, you know, the way showers, the path, the people that are on the path that are, that's what their purpose is to come and find that next thing to teach it to everyone else. So that's kind of my impression of what that is, is it's going to activate the ones that are ready into whatever that next level thing is so that they can get out and teach it and yeah. get everybody else caught up and it keeps going faster and faster you know the first light workers it took it took them a while to get people on board with the new age with the new earth with that idea the Dolores Cannons of the world even like the Brian Weiss's the past life regressions um in different other areas where they were bringing in the information but you know, then the next level of information comes in and pretty soon everybody's caught up, you know, it's like, oh, every, everyone's starting to channel and learn light language and step into this energy and realizing that it's not just the select few that can do it, everyone can do it. So let's all do it. Let's all get there. Let's, let's step into this ability. Do it. <laughs> do it. And so then as people, as a collective start doing that, then they're going to raise it to the next thing. And I think we've used this example before, but you and I grew up in a generation where um, you had a home, a landline in the home for a phone. And some, even when we were real little, a party line possibly. Our kids, my kids have no idea what a landline or a party line even is. You know, it's like, why would you answer somebody else's phone? Why what's, would a you, what's a party line? Uh, where you and your neighbor both shared the same phone line. So if, you picked up the phone, someone was talking, it means your neighbor's on it. You got to wait until they're done. What? And then, when they're done, then you can make your phone call. <laughs> no so way. You shared a phone line. Yep. It was cheaper. Uh -huh. Shared a phone line with the neighbor. Yep. Huh. So, that was back in the day where calling outside of a 10 mile radius was considered long distance. Now we can call all across the United States or other countries. And yeah. we're very spoiled right now compared to. I know. 
<laughs> and that that was a rapid growth so you know we've seen that expansion in our own lifetime and when you so much more to come when you kept on calling it a party line, I thought it was like two cups in a straw. <laughs> <No. laughs> it comes with disco lights. <laughs> <laughs> like, where is this party line at? Yeah, I want to get on the party line. So, yeah. A lot of eavesdropping happened on the party lines. Neighbors knew a lot of information about you. That's yeah. interesting. I never knew nothing about that. Yeah. It would be weird. If so. And, yeah. So, but yeah, the kids today would never even, they wouldn't understand that. They wouldn't understand not having the phone with you. You have, it's what, what's an answering machine, you know, that kind of thing. Rotary dial. Yeah. Even the movies, the older movies that have the brick phones or the flip phones, they're like, what are those? And because they're so used to the smartphones now. So, ah. you know, it's interesting having kids because they'll be like, oh my gosh, and I'd be like, I had that phone. You had that phone? That's so old. And it's like, well, I'm not going to tell you that I had landlines and <laughs> party <laughs> lines. Right. We were excited when the cordless phones came out. <laughs> mm, yeah. yeah. I remember mom go, getting excited when they made a really super long stretch, you know, stretchy cords, the curly ones. Yeah. So she could actually pick up the phone and walk out of the kitchen and make it to one of the other rooms and make it back in. She could actually take the laundry out of the dryer and bring it over to the couch and still sit on the phone and talk because the cord would reach. <laughs> so it'd be like 30, you know, <laughs> yeah, that advancement now to not have that cord. And um, so with that being said, as to comparison of like how technology has improved, how we're improving. Yeah. Like always moving up. And we're moving faster and faster. I mean, look, at we went from that to yes, uh, getting, yes. getting the answering machines to then getting voicemail to then, you know, going from not knowing who's calling to caller ID to them getting the cordless phones. And then do you remember when we had to get to get caller ID, you had to get the little box to hook up to your phone? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then we were so excited. Somebody's calling. We'd run over to see who it was on the caller ID. And then, you know, and then boom, all of a sudden now we have cordless phones. So you could pick the phone up and go upstairs, downstairs, as long as you could get reception. You didn't get too far away. Yeah. So you weren't corded anymore. And then boom, cell phones. And then cell phones went, brrr, you know, we went from those big giant brick phones. Actually, dad had one that he carried in a bag with a big antenna on it. And, um, wow. and I remember mom getting him that for, and it was like, I don't know, $800 or something like that at the time, that, or maybe it was more. It was very expensive for that time. That would have been uh, twice that in our today dollars. And, um, you know, ca him carrying that around and it would barely hold it, you know, it hold the charge for like an hour. <laughs> and that now we have phones that last all day. You can look up the internet. You right, can, right. I mean, there's so much we can do. It's such a different time in just a short period of time. I guess the next question would be is why is it speeding up so much? Like why, why is there a reason for all this speeding up? <laughs> yeah. Well, that would have been a question for Danny. <laughs> so, so maybe next time. in the live show on the 20th. So next time, subscribe. Maybe, yeah. hopefully, I'll write it down. I'll write down that question. <laughs> yeah, why is technology getting going so fast now? So that is a good question. I do have a theory that goes along with it. And the conversation goes with that. We, everything needs to speed up because we need to catch up because we fell behind. Mm. So we need to catch up in advance. So they're like, come on, move it well, along. Another question too, you know, we see all these things on television. You know, you got your Star Trek, Star Wars, but you have all of these shows where um, the technology is very advanced. The clear computer screens and television screens, they're clear and then you turn them on and it, it fills in and, you, you know, because you think, how do you watch TV in a clear screen? And then they turn them on. Have you seen those shows where they have the clear television screens and then they turn it on and music videos it's, are playing and you can watch it from this side or you can watch it from the back side? You're like a hologram? I guess I don't know. It's 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 interesting. It's a screen, and that but you could see it from both sides. You can watch it. So, 
that technology is out there somewhere because somebody's got that idea, right? So that might right. be some questions to ask next time. Where's technology, this technology we see in films and TV, where's that coming from? Uh, well, one theory would be it is, it's all about the drip, you know, create this, make all your money off of it, send that to the masses, create this, yeah. repeat. Make yeah, they've probably got several it. years of technology advancements waiting in the sideline. Oh, yeah. Okay, the purchasing of that's dropped off. Feed them this one now. Oh, yeah. Something different. They, they say there's a technology out there that's easily 50 years more advanced than what we're dealing with. Wow. Good it job. is strips. You it's know. all about money. Yeah. Got it. Yeah. That, that, and it has been said that there's certain technology – like, for example, I remember this in one of Dolores Cannon's books is that you would take this certain medical device. You can use it for healing. Yeah. You can heal a certain individual. But the bad thing about it is you could take it apart. And it's like, oh, I can use this to create something bad with it. Oh. And it's right here, you know, and you can easily take this device and, and you know, do the mess up. Yeah, you can use it as you can shoot at someone and touch up their yeah. cells or organs, and the next thing you know, it's like, hmm, should you really release that to the masses? You know? Yeah. So very good. Yeah, that does give you a little different. That always comes to mind. But so. in a fifth-dimensional New Earth reality, where people aren't vindictive, mean, and cruel, mm -hmm. we could release that kind of technology, couldn't we? Yep. So we're all in love. <laughs> <laughs> Dropping flowers. Yeah. Flower children. <laughs> <laughs> Playing a little guitar. <laughs> oh, that sounds sweet. Sitting around the campfire singing. Yeah. Be good. Mm -hmm. Eating our Girl Scout cookies. Because, you know, you got to have those. Oh, yeah. I like the one with the little coconut. Yeah, that one's good. What do they call that one? I forgot. I always go off the picture. Put it down below, aren't you? You guys are going to put it in the right. In the Girl Scout. Girls. What is your favorite Girl Scout cookie? So. Oh, mint ones. Well, I think that was about it. Did you see anything else? No, I think that was about it with the flash part. That's flash conversation. It. Yeah. So. I like it. I like the part where he said, "Point, paint the picture of the new earth of what you think it's going to be, or what yeah. you want it to be." And with detail, even they were showing a lot of detail in my head. You know, what's the weather like? What's the when you're breathing in the air? What's that? You know, what is that experience? And, mm. and bring it all in. What does the earth beneath your feet feel like? What is everything around you? What is it that you hear? You know, it's just detail it as much as possible. What is that? What does that new Earth experience mean to you? Right. And start putting that frequency out. It's going to amplify it faster. Interesting. They were they're comparing it to like one of those. Um, you know, if you if you can bring me five hundred dollars, I'll match that five hundred dollars for you. And now you have a thousand, and you're that much closer. What? And so that's kind of what what they were saying. You. You bring that energy in, then we can match it. You're going to get there that much faster. Right. Because that's what the universe does. It matches your energy. Like if you want a certain vehicle, the energy matches the vehicle that you're kind of looking for. Jason's really looking forward to the day I drive up in the souped up, jacked up, blue uh, four-door oh. Jeep Cherokee. Yeah. I like Did that. I say blue on that? I think they said blue. Maybe not. I don't know. I'm seeing Not the blue. blues now. I was picturing green for you, you know. Oh, yeah. Like a hunting green or like a... A dark green. Like a... Yeah. That would be okay. Dark green. Like an earth Maybe green. it's because I'm wearing green today. That, that's oh, I was... Yeah, because of earth. That's what I was yeah. thinking, green. Like an earth green. Yeah, well, I'll need it to get to my castle at the top of the mountain. Boom. <laughs> Paint that picture. You paint that picture. 
painting a picture of my castle because <laughs> the sky's not even the limit. Anything's possible. Perfect. I love it. So, well, I think that was it. That's it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Bye, everybody. Thank you for coming and enjoying. We enjoyed this time with you guys and your yeah. comments and for sharing and clicking like and and just supporting us here. So thank you so much, making it possible. Absolutely. And thank you for everything that you do, the comments, the emails, the Facebook messages, and so on. <laughs> yeah. we, so, we do we appreciate it. it. So, And it, it, it makes us feel good, too, to hear all the positive comments that comes through. So it makes us feel like, oh, yeah, we're getting somewhere. You know, we're doing good things out there. So Yeah. Yeah, when you when something resonates with you and you can let us know, of course, yeah, that encourages us to keep going. So if you like the videos, let us know. We appreciate it. Thank nope. you. And don't forget October twentieth, seven p.m. Central Time. <laughs> Daniel's got it on his calendar. Yes, to him it'll be like, oh, I'll see you in a few minutes. <laughs> yeah. All right, we're there. Catch up. <laughs> so. All right. Have a good night. Bye, everybody.